Hi, Jim Hudson here. Let's talk about operation of the TCX59 tire changer. I've got a fairly large truck wheel here that I'm going to change on this machine. I'm just going to start by breaking the beads. I have a, a two position side shovel here that can accommodate very, very large wheels. Um, and I also have three axis control here that, that I can adjust this shovel angle to match any wheel. Of course, I'm careful not to damage the, the edge of the wheel at all. Now, one of the neat features of the, of the, uh, the T659 is this ability to sort of preset the jaws here to the, the wheel you're working with. I happen to know this is a 20-inch wheel, so I can set my diameter here. Uh, I can sort of preset my jaws to that diameter at the 20-inch mark. So that when I place my wheel, I know my jaws are right where they need to be. And I can go ahead and clamp down. Now my mount head I'll bring down with my far left pedal. It'll swing down and in. I'll pull out and down basically on this, this mount head, just such that the mount head is at the edge of the wheel here. And with a single button here locks both of those, those positions in place. So I'm ready to go ahead and demount. I want to start clocking my TPMS position here, so I want to make sure that I, uh, I don't break that TPMS. I have a little sheet down here to let me know where exactly I need to be, be positioning this uh, TPMS sensor to keep from damaging it. I can go ahead and, and position my, my demount finger nice and, uh, nice and slowly if I want to. Again, making sure that TPMS is clocked. Start pulling up. Again, as slowly or as quickly as I want to pull up on that, on that leverless finger. Start to rotate. Second stage of my pedal is, is fast speed, so as soon as that tension comes off, I can go ahead and start to rotate fast. Now, demounting the bottom bead, I'll, I'll use this method, I'll use the hook again to, uh, to go ahead and demount the bottom bead. I'm just going to bring this tire up, and I'm going to hook the bottom bead now with, my, with my, my leverless finger. Once I have my bottom bead hooked and I have it uh, pulled up over the top edge of the wheel, I'll just again go ahead and start to rotate to demount that bottom bead. No need to unlock my, my diameter setting here. I can leave that in place. Demounting the bottom bead, I'm going to do a little differently this time. I'm actually going to clear the head out of the way. I'm going to use the lower disc. So with my head out of the way, I can bring my lower locking demount disc in. I'll just kind of tap it at the edge of the wheel here. Lock that disc in place and pull it up and essentially raise the tire uh, up with the lower disc while holding the, the opposite end of the bead kind of in the drop center. So I'll unlock it here. Once I have that roller clear of the wheel, I'll just indent it just slightly and go ahead and start to rotate and actually push that bottom bead off with the disc rather than using the leverless finger. And a little bit of bead lube here before I go to mount this tire. You know, again, I want to pay attention to where my, my TPMS sensor needs to be for this particular step. So make, make sure that's positioned properly. Bring my, my tire up. Press down on that far left pedal to bring my mount head down and in. That all happens automatically on that pedal press. And go ahead and rotate. It's important to note that uh, the, you know, the top bead needs to stay in the drop center as it's rotating around. So I'm going to use the bead press just to keep that tire feeding into the drop center all the way around my rotation. And I can clear that mount head up and out of the way. I'll need to unclamp and just allow the, the tire to, to sit there on the clamps, uh, on the tabletop essentially, while I'm seating the beads. Bead seating is like any, uh, any automotive tire bead seating process. You know, you never want to exceed 40 PSI to seat the beads. Anything over 40 PSI, you're going to need to use an inflation cage. So I got my beads seated up. I can go ahead and take this tire on off. I'm going over to the balancer. All right, so the TCX 58 and 59 have a couple different blast uh, methods on board. So one of the blast methods they have is actually 
uh, blast inflation through the jaws. So I've obviously got a tire here with a, with a large gap I need to take up. So what I need to do here is I, I've got the bead pre-lubed here. I've got quite a bit of lube on the, the top and bottom beads. It's going to help that tire slide up the barrel of the wheel and seat up. So I'll, I'll hook my inflation chuck up and what I need to do is just make a gap for those, those lower blast nozzles by picking up on the tire. When I press down on the second stage of the blast on the inflation pedal, that's going to activate that jaw-based blast inflation. And I can see I, can, I have my bead uh, taking air here. So I, I'll need to unclamp, just let the tire rest on the tabletop here, and continue to seat the beads. Um, bead seating needs to happen underneath 40 PSI. Anything in excess of 40 PSI needs to have a safety cage. So that's method one of blast inflation on this tire changer. So the TCX58 and 59 are equipped with a, an industry exclusive blast inflation system called Fast Blast. So as these tires get more and more difficult to inflate, I have a mechanism now to bring down a nozzle at the wheel edge. It doesn't have to be right at the edge of the wheel, but, but relatively close, you know, a couple inches above, and blast that, that air right into the tire. So what I want to do is just position the tire so that I've got my gap uh, where my nozzle is, is pointing. Select the blast inflation here with my, my yellow button. I don't need to hold it. Press down on my second stage of the pedal and blast. And just like that, I got this tire seated up. Um, absolutely hands-free. And uh, I can go ahead and finish my inflation. Now, in some extreme cases like this one, it might actually be helpful to flip the wheel upside down and clamp it. That's perfectly okay to do since we've got our jaw protectors installed, so we'll, we're going to protect the front face of that wheel. So I've got my inflation chuck hooked up. All I need to do is set this nozzle position. Activate the charge and blast. All right, so even this 37-inch tire here, it's, a, it's actually a mild stretch on this wheel. It's no match for fast blast. I have this reverse wheel actually clamped standard orientation. Again, flipping some of these wheels sometimes helps, um, helps that, that blast performance out. So I got my inflation chuck hooked up. Again, all I need to do, set my nozzle position, activate my fast blast, press the pedal. Right, so we have a 16-inch ag wheel here. Uh, this is a, a fairly difficult tire to change on any machine, but we've, we've got some assist devices here and some techniques that we can employ to make this tire um, a lot easier to change on this machine. So we'll start by demounting the top bead, of course, and I'll show you one of the things we can run into is, uh, is actually with just demounting the top bead with the hook. Um, sometimes these thick bead bundles have a tendency to want to, they, uh, they come off the back of the hook, basically. They don't stay hooked, essentially. So I'll have to, uh, I'll just give it a little bit of a help here to get up and over the back of the hook. But what I'll do is I'll use my press arm here. And I'll use my press arm to just sort of pre-tension this hook a little bit. So I'll, I'll just kind of feather the, uh, the bead press and the, the, the mount hook to put enough pressure on this to, so, such that the tire stays hooked. And once I have a little gap here, I'll just put my bar in there just to give my, my leverless hook a little bit of a help. Um, you know, it did all the heavy lifting for me. I'm just going to kind of use this as a, as a way to establish a traction point and pull that top bead off. Now, one of the things uh, that will sometimes happen is the bottom bead will reseat. We can re-break that bottom bead at any point with this lower disc. Um, that's a technique that works on any tire. In this case, it was able to break free. Now, I'm actually going to use the, the demount hook to demount the, the lower bead on this, this assembly. So I'm going to use my my bead press as a bead lift. There we go. That got it hooked. Now I ha might have to kind of play with both of these controls at the same time, just again to make sure I sort of preload my, uh, my bead with the, with the bead press. But I can go ahead and start to roll my, uh, you know, pull my, my f leverless finger up and start to demount that bottom bead. And again, I think what I'll have to do here, since this is such a stiff bead bundle, I'll use my, uh, my lever here as an assist device to uh, just to kind of establish traction as my, my uh, leverless mount demount hook basically did all the heavy lifting for me. 
rotate and I'll pull that bottom bead off. Now one thing to be kind of careful with here on these just extremely stiff sidewall uh, tires is too much lubrication sometimes on mount can be detrimental. Um, it can make it difficult to establish a, a traction point if the tire just kind of has a tendency you want to spin on the wheel. Great for force matching, but not, uh, not so great for just regular mounting of these very, very stiff assemblies. So, I'll come in, I'll kind of bring out, come around here, sort of start to thread that tire on. Again, it's got a lot of spring to it, so I'll have to kind of give it a nice shove. Machine's got plenty of power to, to spin with ease, though, to, to mount this tire up. Again, I'll, I want to deploy my press arm, this time as a press device, to keep this tire not only in the drop center, but uh, as a nice point to uh, establish traction here. Make sure that it stays inside the drop center all the way around. And I've got this tire all mounted up without sweating. So I'm ready to go ahead and inflate normally. Um, again, 40 PSI, uh, anything in excess of 40 PSI, you need a safety cage. All right, so let's go ahead and change this 19.5 tire. I'll just bring my head down, position it at the edge of the wheel. Have my beads broken already, of course. Top bead demount is relatively standard, so I'll just go ahead and clear the head out of the way and use my lower disc to demount this bottom bead. Bring my roller in right at the edge of the rim, the lower bead there, and I'll just bring this up um, and keep my opposite end of the tire in the drop center as I'm coming up with that roller. And just when I have a nice little crown here, I have a, have a gap. I can go ahead and start to rotate. I don't even need to indent with this 45 degree bead seat. I can just come straight up with the roller, clear it out of the way when I'm done. Bottom bead mount's pretty typical again. I want to make sure I'm not mounting over my, my demount hook, of course, that's, that's standard procedure on all tires to make sure it's not uh, it's tracking underneath that demount hook. I use my bead press to keep this tire in the drop center, this top bead, and just kind of monitor as it's, as it's rotating around and make sure that tire continues to feed in the drop center. Clear my mount head out of the way. And go ahead and inflate this tire normally. Again, never exceed 40 PSI to seat those beads. All right, so let's change this huge 37-inch assembly here. This wheel is actually 14 inches wide. It's a reverse wheel, so I have it clamped upside down. But really, the process remains the same. I'll bring my mount head down toward the edge of the wheel, lock it in place. Now, I'll run my leverless finger down. This tire happens to drop down quite a bit into the uh, into the the drop center. So what I might need to do is just uh, use my lever here just to kind of just manually bring that mount, that, bring that bead up so that I can hook it. Once I have it hooked, I can go get my standard lever on there and go and start to rotate. Now on a tire that, that kind of spins inside the, uh, that spins on the wheel, I can insert a traction tool here just to get that, that point of traction to spin it on around. Now, on the, again, on this heavy, heavy, large diameter tire, I'm actually going to use the disc to demount the bottom bead. So I'll bring the disc down. And again, lock it in place. You just sort of keep the opposite end of the tire in the drop center as you're coming up with that disc until you see that disc kind of come up and over and start to crown. There's obviously a very, very big, uh, a very big wheel here. Big, large tire, I should say, and big wheel. I'll indent my roller here. Go 
go and start to roll that tire right off. Push that bottom bead off. Again, I might need to use a traction tool here to get that traction point established. Bottom beads, sometimes, you know, you can just sort of press them right on. So this is one of those that I can just sort of press the bottom bead on as a shortcut. Bring my mount head down. And again, like any wheel and tire, I want to make sure that I'm tracking over or under the mount head. I want to make sure this top bead stays in the drop center while I'm, while I'm mounting. So I'll just bring this bead press down. I might need to pull on my, my press arm just a little bit to establish traction too. Right, so now we're going to go over some advanced techniques on this passenger car tire here. Um, some of these passenger car tires have, have very, very tight bottom beads. They, 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 they don't have a, a lot of room there, a lot of gap for the clamps to come in and clamp. So what I can do is I can actually use my cone from the top and I can push this wheel down onto the clamps. I've got my clamp sort of preset, but as you can see that the, the bead press pushes the wheel down flat against the clamp so I can go ahead and clamp uh, without having to try to push it down on the clamps myself. External clamping is obviously preferred since it offers up the maximum amount of wheel protection. So I'll bring my mount head down. Depending on what, where I am, what I might have to do is make a small gap for my mount head. Um, I can use my press arm to do that if I need to maybe adjust it a little bit like I do here. Of course, I'll always want to make sure that I'm, uh, my, my top bead is in the drop center here when I'm, when I'm pulling my, my top bead up over the, over the wheel. I want to start clocking my TPMS position, of course, that, that's very important to do. So I got a, a spot here that's, that's not in the drop center. I want to just push that in the drop center with my bead press. I can see all the way around the tire I've got sucking down in the drop center just fine. So I'll go ahead and, and demount that top bead. The bottom bead I'll actually just use the disc on. I'll clear that tool head out of the way. Give it just a little bit of an indent here. Push that bottom bead off. All right. Bring my mount head back in. Like most tires, the, the bottom bead mount's not typically um, terribly challenging. But I'll show you a technique that you can use here, actually, that might not be terribly intuitive for keeping this top bead in the drop center here as I rotate all the way around. Obviously that's the most important thing to remember on top bead mount. So as I'm mounting I've got my tire in the drop center but I can, as I can see I've actually started to uh, to mount it, the tire started to sort of mount itself up over here on this opposite side. So what I can do is actually use my bead hook as sort of a press device and I can actually press that tire down back down in the drop center by by partially inserting that hook go and start to rotate around and just sort of watch everything. Once that, I know that that tire is mounted up, we know it gets about the nine o'clock or so position, um, I can go ahead and pull my tool hook all the way up and pull my, my, uh, my bead press out. So um, just a kind of a, a neat trick there you can use to use the, the, the hook itself as a press device essentially to help maintain that over under condition, help push the, the, uh, the tire under the drop center. And I can go ahead and inflate this tire normally um, obviously, always you know, make sure that uh, anything over 40 PSI you're inflating in a safety cage. All right, so we've seen a range of different tips and tricks to help deal with challenging assemblies on the TCX59 tire changer. I really hope this helps you get the most out of your machine. For more content like this, check out the Hunter Learning Channel on YouTube. Thank you all for watching.